Good morning. Today is Thursday, January 19th, 2023. There's a lot of commentary about the new Israeli government, both the personalities and the policies. We are having a Zoom session on Sunday, January 29th at 11 a.m. with Professor Chaba Nikolnyi. And I invite you, urge you, to see our website for details and for registration. He is an incredibly gifted analyzer of the Israeli political scene, and he will be sharing with us his perspective on what's going on. This morning, I want to look at one narrow issue that has received some attention, and it has particular resonance, especially for those of us here in Canada. I recently read two articles in the Times of Israel with, in my opinion, somewhat misleading headlines. One of them reads, Doctors' Union takes aim at minister who claimed faith is grounds to deny treatment. Well, that sounds pretty frightening. This is doctors connected with the IMA, Israel Medical Association, and they were responding to criticize a statement made by National National Missions Minister Orit Strzok. I want to give a full disclosure here. I'm only going to relate to the quote of Orit Strzok that is quoted in this article. I don't know anything else that she has said about this subject, and I don't know anything else about her. I'm just responding to the quote that I'm going to share you, to, to share with you. So recently, a lot of people were upset when she said, Struck said, that doctors should be allowed to refuse to provide treatments that contravene their religious faith, as long as, she said, another doctor is willing to provide the same treatment. And in fact, the government has proposed legislation that would potentially allow service providers, medical service providers, to refuse service if it contradicts their religious beliefs. So, Dr. Zev Feldman is the deputy chairman of the IMA, Israel Medical Association, and he said that this position enunciated by Orit Strzok could potentially empower doctors to decline a range of treatment, including fertility treatment to unmarried women, abortions, and specialist care for LGBTQ Israelis. He said, we will hold firm to the oath we all took, he's as doctors, and treat every person to the best of our ability, regardless of race, gender, or any other factors. He said the medical cl- community is close to unanimous that medical ethics are based on the fact that the patient's identity and life choices must never deter a physician from providing them with the best level of care. He went on to say, the Israeli healthcare system has a reputation, which we're proud of, for treating everyone equally. Jewish and Arab doctors work together in a system that discriminates against no one, and this must remain. Shimon Glick is a professor emeritus in medical ethics at Ben-Gurion University. He is an Orthodox Jew, and he is an expert on Jewish medical ethics. And he said, in reaction to Orit Strzok's comment, he said, physicians in the Western world are responsible to treat everyone, period. And the Jewish attitude is also that way. He said, a person may not agree with For example, homosexuality. But as a doctor, they have the obligation to treat that person just like they treat everyone else. So I think we need to distinguish 
between two related categories of treatment that I think are being confused in this and other articles. Because the first question is who and how we treat, we treat, I don't know, I can't speak today, who and how we treat, meaning who we treat and how we treat them, that's number one. And the second subject is what treatment we provide. So, who we treat, I agree with the doctors 100%. Everyone and anyone who seeks our help should be treated, no exceptions for religion, ideology, political views, race, color, lifestyle, etc. Zero. Zero exceptions. And not only who we treat, but how we treat them. Not just to treat them, but to treat with sensitivity, with respect, with empathy, with non-judgment about any aspect of lifestyle or political views or race, color, anything else. Zero judgment, just medical treatment in a sensitive, empathetic way. And as Dr. Feldman says, yes, it is absolutely true. Israel is a beacon to the world for Jewish and Arab doctors, nurses, first responders, other medical professional, professionals working together, working smoothly together, and treating everyone, even in the most extreme cases, which, which happens, Jewish professionals treating injured Palestinian terrorists. And this happens every day on a regular basis, as it should. And if anyone were to se suggest altering this approach, I would be completely opposed to that view. But the words quoted by Arit Strzok address a different issue. What treatment do we provide? If I, as a doctor or a nurse, let's just take the case of a doctor, it's it's simpler for our purposes, but it applies to any professional. If I have a sincerely held belief that my performing a given treatment violates my principles, my human principles, my religious principles, whatever it's based on, and someone else is available to provide that treatment, I should be allowed to excuse myself. Again, it must be with respect, with sensitivity, without judgment in any way. But the truth is, I have articulated this to you a number of times in the past, particularly here in Canada, to argue that doctors must be allowed to not perform made medically assisted aid in dying or euthanasia, given that it is now legal here in Canada, and it is a clear violation of Jewish law, a serious violation of Jewish law, at the very least, doctors must be able to refuse to do that action that they consider an act of murder. And uh, if that's true here in Canada, it should certainly be true in Israel. State of Israel is not run in accordance with Jewish law. Some people think that's good. Some people think that's bad. That's a subject for another time. But it does and should have a Jewish character, which includes proper treatment for every human person. And it should also include at least awareness of Jewish values and practices. Awareness. The other day I saw a Facebook post that had a photo of a public bathroom in Israel and there was a sign on the door in Hebrew and the sign reads, for those who are Shomer Shabbat, who observe Shabbos, this toilet uses electricity to flush. Like a public service announcement, it's on the door. The sign is not telling you what to do. They're not locking the toilet on Shabbos. 
They're just allowing a person who does observe Shabbos and cares about whether it is manual or electric to be accommodated, to have the information, to make their own choice. In my opinion, so long as medical treatment decisions are made in line with these guidelines, I would support it. I would be in favor of it, both in Israel and around the world. My friends, I want to wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.